All right. So let's look at how to combine like terms. When you were in middle school, you were you were probably shown how to combine like terms in a different way. And that method you're probably more familiar with is, you know, the rainbow method, which I showed here. But actually, if you want to see it in another way, so first I'm copying 3x plus 6. And then when I copy the second group, I try to kind of line them up. So since 7 has an x, I put it underneath the 3x. And then 3 is the constant. So I put plus 3 over here. And then I do the vertical. Oh, you can, you can hear my my 4-year-old's zoom. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So if I add these two together, 3 plus 7, that's going to be 10. We bring down the common variable. Okay. And then we add these together because they have the same sign as well. So plus 9. There you go. All right. Now, how do we do, oh, let me just admit some more people. How do we do this example vertically? Okay, so the example I showed you here is done horizontally. Some of you are, are you know, fast enough to kind of do it that way, and nobody is stopping you to do that method. Um, I'm just kind of showing an alternative in case some of us are, are a little confused. So I have here negative. 5x squared, and then I have plus 5x, and then I, I see a negative 2x squared, but since there's something that's similar to it, then I'm going to write it underneath it. So pretty much I'm collecting like terms, lining them, up, lining them up, and then I got the negative 8x. Now the positive 11, I don't have a column for a constant yet, so I'm going to do positive 11. And then negative x is, you know, similar to that one, negative x. Pretty much this has this as a 1, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the last number is minus 15. So now when you, <coughs> excuse me, so when you um, line them up, you would see that these two together will become negative 7x squared, right? Now where did the 4x come from? Well, let's see, 5 and negative 8 together is negative 3, right? Because you take the sign of the bigger number and then subtract the value. So that's negative 3. But there's another negative 1 here. So that's where the negative 4x come from. And then this one, um, different signs, we subtract the values and we take the sign of the bigger number. So negative and then the difference is 4. Okay, so whichever method you... Um, uh, you use, you'll end up with the same answer. Okay, so I hope that kind of helped with the warm up that you will do. So in your, um, let me, yeah, let me clear the ink so it's not, okay. Here we go. So in your warm up, um, go ahead and open 1.2 interleave review combined like terms. And start working on that. You just have to write the letter of the correct answer. Well, in the second part, okay, you just have to tell whether the number here is a solution to the equation or not. So how are you going to do that? Pretty much you're just going to substitute. Like if this is 2, you change every x to 2 and see if the left and the right hand sides um, matching. Okay, so if you guys need a calculator, I shared a calculator with you last time. I don't know if you bookmarked it, but it's called decimals.com slash scientific. So you might find that useful today while you're doing your warm up. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give you some quiet time. It's 1027. I'll give you about, um, you know, 10 minutes. We'll see if this can be done in 10 minutes. Um, I will ask you again later if you need time or you're good. Okay? All right. So let's work on the warm-up.
All right. Um, time is up. Did anybody else have a difficulty um, opening the 1.2 interleave review? Because right now I only see a couple who have used their attempts. Okay, I can kind of see like um, on the spot whether you've started or you submitted it, what's your score, and so on. Did anybody else um, have a hard time opening it? Because I want to know if there's something wrong with the system or stuff like that. Yeah, because um, some of us could not open the, uh, the warm-up. So let us know. We're not sure if it's our device or, yeah. All right, so if you guys are not done in one minute, we're going to switch to the other one. If you had a difficulty doing it, I um, I would strongly suggest um, just go back to it later um, so it doesn't take away our time from the lesson. So you can do that independently um, at around maybe after 11 o'clock or maybe during your lunch break. I have no... You know, um, I have no idea why it's not working for, you know, on some devices. But, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to ask you to close that window for your warm-up. If you guys are not done. Um, hey, honey, mommy's working. You want to go to the living room for me, please? Okay, so what I would like you to do now is, I'm sorry, I have to stop my video for now because my, my kid is here and I have to send her to the living room for now. Okay, you want to go in your little tent, honey? Because mommy's working and I'm going to close the bedroom door for now, okay? All right. Okay. Um, so as I was saying, we're going to switch to this slide that has three pages our warm-up was on combining like terms and now i would like you to look at the second page which has our new lesson i'm gonna share this screen um, just to make sure that we're all seeing the same page and i'm gonna go back to the chat again later on to kind of answer some of your questions all right, um, it's loading. Now, a lot of people ask me um, how, you know, they're going to do the digital notebook. Just so we won't use our instructional time answering digital notebook related questions, we are, we are going to do that on Mondays, you know, on alternating Mondays, just so we don't lose time on the lesson. Okay. All right. So for our lesson today, we are going to continue solving equations. And I highlighted what it means to solve a multi-step equation. It simply means you have to isolate the variable. In other words, you have to get the variable by itself by using the properties that I asked you to read on um, in yesterday's slides. Okay, so I have some, I have some examples here and we're going to go over them one by one. Well, first... Um, I'm sorry, I have to stop my video because my kid is showing. Um, so first, what I would like you to do is you can grab a piece of paper and write these problems down. Or if you're comfortable typing on the slides while I teach, you can also do that. All right. So for the first example... I'm going to start my writing slate. Okay, so for the first example, since we want to get the variable by itself, every number that's in the way, we have to get rid of them, right? So let me copy 2.5x. But since we want to get rid of the negative 13, we have to do its opposite. So that means we're going to add 13 to the left-hand side. So the opposite is positive equals... Whatever we do to the left, we have to do to the right. So if I added 13 here, I also, add, I also have to add 13 over there. Okay, so now we're going to um, 
combine like terms. Hmm. So since negative 13 and positive 13 are opposites, they cancel each other out. So you get 2.5x, and then this will become 0, right? Um, okay, so equals, and then we add together 2 plus 13 is 15. Okay, so now we have to divide both sides by the number that was multiplied to 2 point, or multiplied to x. So we divide by 2.5, and then we divide by 2.5. Okay. Give me one sec. So I'll check the chat in a little bit. If it's urgent, please feel free to unmute yourself so I can, um, yeah, pause. All right. And then after that, you cancel these two together. So you will be left with just x equals... Now, when you divide 15 by 2.5, you guys will get 6, right? So this is the final answer. Now, I am very heavy on writing the answer in standard form. Now, what does the standard form mean? It's just a fancy way of saying the variable has to be on the left-hand side, okay? Although this means the same thing as you know, 6 equals x. Okay, but in standard form, the variable has to be on the left. All right, so now let's provide some reasons to the examples that we did. Um, first, we write down given here. Okay. Now, when we added 13 to both sides, that's our clue. We added, so we're going to put addition I'm going to use shortcuts here because I, I will run out of space if I don't. Addition, property of equality. Okay? And then when we added 2 plus 13 and changed them to 15, we actually just simplified, right? So simplify. Okay. And last but not the least, when we divided both sides by 2.5, so the clue is we divided, so we say division, property, of equality. There you go. So I'm going to pause and have like a minute for questions about the first example. Feel free to unmute yourself. Or you can also type. Yeah, you got it right, Luis. You got six also. So feel free to also type in the chat if you guys have questions. Any questions about the first example? Oh, oh, division property of equality. I'm so sorry, honey. I wrote so sloppy. So division property of equality. Yes, we're going to do all of them. In fact, if you can look at your own copy of this slide, um, there's three here and there's four on the next page. Yeah. Okay. So the other page is just for, for your practice because I want to show you where you can do your, your homework slash IW. So we hope to finish these four. You can practice on the other slide later because I want to show you how to do the Delta math stuff because some of you are still not on it. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. So if there are no questions on that, let's move on to the second example. So what happens when, you know, there's two terms that have the same variable on one side? So what are we going to do? So the very first thing you have to do is to combine the like terms first. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to get you started on this. And then I'm going to wait for you to type your answer in the chat. How about that? Okay. All right. So we write down negative 12 equals... Oh, did somebody get the answer already? Let me see. Um, ooh, 3x. Okay, Luis, do me a favor. Could you please unmute yourself and help me work on this one? Thank you, honey. All right. Uh, 
Uh huh. Okay, but you were saying 3x. Let's start with that and then we'll build up on what you said. Okay, so you said 3x here, right? Okay, then what do I copy next? Okay, so I bring down 15. Cool. Then tell me how, like, you're thinking about it, and then I'll try to kind of match the, you know, what I should be doing, like the fancier way to do it or say it. That's cool. So you said you converted 15 to negative. So I will say you subtracted 15 from both sides. Is that what you were thinking? Okay. So then that's going to be you subtracted 15 from both sides. Cool. And then you said you got negative 27. Am I right? Okay. So you canceled this and you just brought down 3x. Okay. And what was your answer? Negative 9, okay. When you divided both sides by 3, you got negative 9. Cool. But I have to switch these in standard form. So I have to put the x on the left-hand side, okay? So the final answer here would be x is equal to negative 9. And you got it right, Louise. Mm -hmm. All right. So when Louise divided both sides by 3, negative 27 divided by 3 is negative 9. Awesome. Thanks for helping me. All right. I would like to hear from more volunteers maybe in the next few problems. Okay. So providing the reasons here. Given is always the first one when you see the problem. Maybe you're wondering how you're going to be given a quiz on this one. You will be forwarded a worksheet that you can annotate using Kami. Um, or you can also do it on a paper and then you guys send me a picture of your paper. Um, you will be given equations to solve and you write down the reasons um, on the right-hand side. So when Dewey said um, he got 3x, it's just because he combined the like terms, right? So we're going to put simplify. When you're combining like terms or just adding and subtracting, just put simplify. Now when Dewey said he converted the positive 15 to negative, okay, um, he actually subtracted 15 from both sides. And the property we use for that is subtraction property of equality okay and then when the least cancel the opposites and combine these two numbers together it's just like when you combine 9x and 6x so that's also simplify okay i'm kind of running out of space over here because of these meeting controls but last but not the least um louise said divide both sides by uh, positive 3 to get negative 9 so that's going to be division, property of equality. All right. So um, we're not getting the lesson. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks for letting me know. I do appreciate that, you know. Um, so what I would like us to do is, you know, if you did not get the first example or the second example, like don't dwell on it. I, every new example is a new opportunity for us to get it. So I'll, I'll try to kind of slow down a little bit when I teach the third one. But um, those who can already proceed, please don't wait for me. So just keep going. You have more problems to do on the next page. I'll slow down a little bit so we can um, uh, give more details on the statements and reasons um, part of the lesson. All right. So I'm going to uh, review again what we're trying to do. We're trying to um, find the value of the variable that makes the equation true. And in order to do that, we have to get the x by itself. Okay, And every number that's in the way of getting the x by itself, we have to get rid of them. Okay, The third example is a little bit different from the first two because we now see a parenthesis. Okay, so it doesn't mean that if you do this, then you won't be able to do the first two. They just kind of increase in level of difficulty. So if you can understand, um, you know, a more difficult example, I'm pretty sure you will be able to do an easier one, right? So let's work on this. If you see, um, if you see a number before a parenthesis, 
you have to distribute that number first. Okay, so you make your rainbows. Like 2 times 1 is 2, right? And then 2 times negative x. So you keep the sign, which is negative, and then you just write them side by side. So that's 2x. So you're done with the distributing part. You're done with the rainbow part. You do not distribute the 2 to positive 3 because it's only connected to the parentheses. So what are you going to do with the positive 3 then? Well, just bring it down, right? If you're not sure what to do with the number, just bring it down. That's the safest thing to do so you don't lose it, okay? And then equals... Oh, what happened to my pen? It disappeared. Okay, there. Oh, now I'm writing random stuff. Let me just erase this one. Okay. All right, so equals negative 8. All right. So now let's look at these again. Remember, your goal, your target is to get the x. Okay, there's... Or, uh, there are numbers around it. You got 2, 3, there's another number connected to it. But before you get close to that, you have to, you have to get rid of these two first. So 2 and 3, can you combine them? Do they have the same sign? If they do, then you add them up. So 2 and 3 together become a 5, right? And then you copy this guy over here because we're not doing anything with it yet. And then equals negative 8. Okay. Oh, wow. Now we're getting simpler equation and we're getting closer to the x so now this five is in the way before i get this one separately so that means i have to get rid of the five and if i can if i can go back to what louis said earlier he said oh that positive 15 i you know converted it to negative so we could do the same thing here if this is a positive five then we can get rid of it right we can get rid of it and subtract 5 from both sides. So if we subtract 5 from both sides, it will become a negative 5 over here. Okay? I can also write 5 minus 5 on the same side. That's also possible in the same way as I wrote 15 minus 15 over here. If that confuses you though, okay, then just cancel it in one part and then you do its opposite on the other. Okay, the 2 comes to the negative. So that's, that's a bundle. That's a package. It cannot lose its sign. So you have to bring it down again. Equals. Now these two, they have the same sign. So I have to add them. I get a negative, right? And then 8 plus 5 is 13. All right. So now what's going to happen? Oh, now I'm just left with, you know, that group that has x in it. But I got to get rid of this negative 2. So if a number and a variable are side by side, it just means they were actually multiplied together, right? So to find the x, you do the opposite. What's the opposite of multiplication? Like what did Luis say earlier when he got rid of that 3 over there? He said he divided both sides and got negative 9. So we'll do the same thing here. We can divide both sides by negative uh, 2 right there okay and definitely this will cancel each other out right and you're left with your target the x okay so x is equal to negative divided by negative is positive and then 13 divided by 2 if you don't know how to do that in your head no worries in fact i prefer fractions in your answers so 13 over 2 you can also change it to mixed number but in algebra 2 they normally prefer improper fraction if you are using a calculator right now, you can also change it into um, 6.5, whichever you prefer. I, again, personally prefer um, just leaving it in a fraction form. Okay. So let's recap what we had. That was the given problem, right? And then we did the distributive property on the 2. So distributive property. And then we, com we subtracted the 5. We changed the 5 to a negative and put it on the other side. So we subtracted. That's your clue. So that's subtract, uh, subtraction property of equality. Then we changed the negative 8 and negative 5 into negative 13. So that's combined like terms only. Or we're just going to put simplify. 
And then the last one is we divided both sides by negative 2. So that's division, property of equality. All right. Uh, I'll pause for like 30 seconds to read the chat and ask questions if you have any. My notes don't let me write on them. Oh, you know what, honey? You, you have to make mommy. a copy. Mommy, so you go to mommy, file. Mommy. Honey, mommy is working. Mommy, mommy, okay. Mommy, so. So. Mommy, 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 mommy. Okay, Ate will help you. All right, let me just close the living the bedroom door so they don't come in. Okay, so as I was, oh, you go to file and then make a copy. If it doesn't let you write notes, that's actually a table, honey. I'll show you the, the um, and if it doesn't work, right now you know that you can um, write it down first on a piece of paper and take a screenshot of it, and then you catch up on the notes part later on. Um, can I show you in a bit? I just have to clear this ink. Um, are you, do you guys need any of the things written here because i have to like clear the ink and when i go back to this you won't be able to see it anymore so take a screenshot if okay okay i'm gonna clear the ink and show you briefly how you can type on the notes um okay all right so Mm -hmm. There, honey, if you double click on it, that's actually a table. So you see how, how I'm typing like this? You know, if you cannot write, well, maybe you write on a piece of paper and then you transfer them later. Or what the other students are doing um, is they're writing it on their paper and then you can delete this ones later, you know, take them out, you know, delete them and then just paste a copy or paste your picture, the picture that you took from your paper. So um, we can, you know, we can be very creative about this one. Do whatever works for you because definitely, um, you know, we, we do have different circumstances right now. So definitely you cannot write it the same way as I'm writing, but um, you can type or you can take a picture later. So, yeah. Now, I hope that's clarified a little bit. And the last answer is x is equal to 1. Thank you for um, getting me back on track, Luis. Um, I will go back to this again. Um, okay. Uh -huh. And Luis, would you like to help me again on the last one? I'm waiting for my thing to load right here. Okay. Um, give me one sec. I think when I got out of it and then... Oh, page unresponsive. Okay. Um, give me one second. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work in 30 seconds, we're going to find another way to do it. Okay. Um... Let me stop the share for now and then share it again later on. Um, yeah, so you can type your answers in once you've made your copy. Uh-huh. Okay, so my notebook is not loading. Uh, oh, here we go. It works now. I'm going to share this again with you so Luis can help me. And all right. Okay, Luis, do you see the problem that we're going to do now? I just want to know if I shared the right thing. Do you see it? Yes? Okay. Did I share the screen back? Okay, cool. All right. Go ahead, sir. Ready when you are.
So negative 2x, okay. And then just bring it down, right? Okay. Like this. Okay. positive ones, right? There you go. That's awesome. X is equal to 1. Okay, so providing reasons for the steps that Luis helped me with. So that's your given information. Okay. And then, um, okay, I'm going to stop my video for a while. And then um, distributed property. And then after that, Luis said convert the positive 21 to negative 21. So he subtracted. So that's subtraction, property of equality. And then um, he got negative 7. So <laughs> simplify. Okay. My four-year-old is <laughs> playing around here. Okay. And then last but not the least, he divided by 7. So that's division property of equality. Property of equality. All right. Okay, so those are the first four examples. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I would like us all to go to deltamath.com. I hope these help you, you know, um, give you some ideas on how to solve multi-step equations. Definitely, I added more just so you can practice on them um, on the next page. But for now, I would like us to go to deltamath.com because I was checking it last night. I will be doing like a lot of recording and grading, you know, Schoology in the next few days. So please make sure that you catch up with all your assignments or homeworks. I'm going right now to deltamath.com. If you have not joined, you have to because all your homeworks are here. I call the homeworks IW or individual work because, you know, we're home all the time anyway, right? Okay. Um, if you guys need the code to join Delta Math, it's in one of the pages of the digital notebook. If I remember it right, I think it's 918819. That's the code. So you have to like um, create an account. Okay, let's go period three. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have no way to kind of show you without the, the averages showing, but let me explain how I'm going to, you know, record your grade in Schoology. So every grading period, your average out of 100 will be recorded. So your goal is to get the highest average possible. Um, so this shows me that some of you have not started, but I'm not blaming you. I probably also, you know, lacked... Um, a system of reminding you on how to do that or whether we have a homework or not. So last night I came up with something like this in Schoology and I extended some deadlines as well, you know, just so um, we can wait for some more students to work on that. On your Schoology, my, I revised my digital notebook such that it's showing you, okay, let me, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen right here. Okay. On the first page, 
you have um you know a table that shows you when a homework is due and what's the title of the homework so um since we meet every other day i just thought of using um as a deadline the monday after you know the homeworks were assigned so since i'm assigning you these homeworks this week so then they are due monday next week okay i just realized that those who i meet on tuesdays um they have an edge in doing the homework because you know they know about it beforehand so i just wanted to have like an even playing field for everybody for all the uh, blocks or periods so every monday of the week after that's going to be the deadline of the homework so if you have it if you have not done 1.1 in delta math you can still work on them okay you can still work on them so so far you have three homeworks in delta math this is just like the practice homework it's still part of the average though mental math and then you guys have solving simple equations right there and then today's homework is 1.2 solving multi-step equations okay let me go to the chat i think somebody um uh one second okay uh oh thank you samantha for yeah for sharing the code yes it's nine one eight eight one nine okay thanks honey all right cool okay you've been very helpful guys all right um now do you guys have any questions now let me show um some good things about delta math you know it gives you it gives you some samples if you guys are kind of you know um not sure how to do it oh i should not be like doing that because it's going to edit the assignment i'm sorry i click on the wrong thing so let's say let's type equations okay let's say two-step equations looking at the chat i put the wrong code now i'm in another class oh um I'm not sure if you can unenroll your yourself from that class or maybe the teacher will just notice and say who okay i'm gonna remove this student from this account so um yeah just type in the right code honey yeah okay so 918819 thank you to samantha for typing that in so the good thing about this is um what do you call this you have like two possible attempts and each time it will you know it will provide you some support it will give you a little bit of help um if you don't get problem number two correct don't worry you can still get a perfect perfect score can you put the link in the chat okay um give me one second because i'm in the teacher link so you have to go to deltamath.com and samantha has the code all right so if, for example, you get question number three wrong, you can still get a perfect score because what it's going to do is it will replace it with a new problem. So it will not stop giving you a new problem until you get the required number of, you know, um, questions answered correctly. So if you got a 33%, it could be because you stopped working after or before reaching your target. Um, in the mental math, maybe you went lower than the time expected. Okay. But one good thing about Delta Math is everybody has a chance to get 100% all the time. So you can be in your 15th question, but that 15th question is the number 10 question that you get right. So then you can stop there mm -hmm. on your 15th question. Okie dokie. All right. Are there any more? Um, are there any more questions regarding the homework? Again, for digital notebook questions, we will be doing that on a Monday, those rotating Mondays on schedule. All right, we got two minutes for questions. I'm sorry, I went over time again. Live should be, you know, for 40 minutes only. 
So if you need to go right now, you guys are free to do so. Um, and sorry for today's interruption. I have to like take out their tent in the living room maybe so they're playing it. They will play next time in the living room. Yes, yourself. Um, I, oh, that's a good question. Um, hang on. I remember, Luis, weren't you the one who had an, um, a previous account and then you had to enter a new account to join my class? Is Luis still here? Okay, but he was, yeah, he was the one who was able to, like, switch his old Delta Math code to the new one that I gave the class because um, I can't I can't see like a student student version I'm not sure um, mm. okay I will I will check my email later honey and then I'll get back to you uh, via remind if you can text me you have I have you in the remind group already right Okay, so remind me at the end of the day after my last class and I'll see what I can do for you, okay? All right. Alrighty, you guys. It's time to say goodbye for today. I will see you all. Oh, I'll see you on Monday, right? Monday or Tuesday. Okay, so happy weekend already. Bye. Bye.